Hey there, welcome back. Or if you're new to my channel, my name is Katie and this is Louisiana Cooking and Living. And um, today we're doing something a little different. I haven't done this before. Well, actually, because I've done it one time. But so our channel here is Louisiana Cooking and Living. So we do a lot of cooking here, but we also do a little bit of the living stuff that goes on in Louisiana. And for us in our little homestead here in South Louisiana, um, we have both gardens and we have chickens. And um, <clears throat> so I like to show a little bit of that. And then also just different things around the state that, I mean, we spend most of the time at home, but if we get to go out and do some fun little adventures, we'll take you along for that. When we moved out here, we bought a freeze dryer in order to preserve some of our produce from the garden in a different way. Um, we'll can some, we'll freeze some, we can freeze dry it. And when you freeze dry something, you can put it in a mylar bag and it is good for 25 years if you store it properly with an oxygen, oxygen absorber. And um, it doesn't uh, deteriorate the nutrients in your food like dehydrating wood or um, canning can um, break down your food nutrients a little bit. So it's just a different way to preserve food. I have run chicken broth through the freeze dryer and made my own chicken bouillon with it. I've done garlic and made my own garlic powder, onion to make onion powder, different things like that. One time I have done, and I've seen a lot of people do meats in there to have shelf stable meat. And one time I just kind of did it as a trial run, had some leftover taco meat and we ran it through the freeze dryer my husband was going out of town. He works out of town quite a bit. And he was going to take that with him and rehydrate it and see how it did so he could have a home-cooked meal while he was out of town. He said it um, rehydrated perfectly. And so we thought we would get some shelf-stable food run through our freeze dryer that we could have in case of um, like an emergency, like if we had a hurricane come through and... Um, we would lose electricity for a couple of days. We could have some food that would be shelf stable. Um, my husband could take it out of town if he wanted to bring some home cooked meals with him. Or um, I am a nurse and I work nights and so sometimes I don't want to cook before I go to work. So this would be a way we could have quick, easy meals ready to go. So for dinner tonight, I made meatloaf and mashed potatoes and I want to run that through the freeze dryer and see how that works. I have seen where people do the mashed potatoes in the freeze dryer and that way they would have homemade instant mashed potatoes. And so that was really exciting to me to have something easy like that. I also browned up some extra ground meat to have that on hand also. That way we could turn it into quick taco meat, spaghetti meat, whatever it is. So we could have that on the shelf. The more um, ways you have things preserved, the, um, I guess the more benefits as in like if our electricity went out and we lost our freezers, well, we could lose our meat in our freezers. So if you have it on the shelf, that's just another way to make sure you have food available whenever you need it. So what we're going to do is get our food on the trays and then we'll get those into the freeze dryer. Freeze dryer does take a good amount of time. If you freeze your food prior to putting in the freeze dryer, it does cut down on the time. I don't have freezer space to put these trays in the freezer to pre-freeze the food. So we'll get on the free the trays and we'll get it in the freeze dryer. So the first thing that's going to be easy to put on the trays is just our ground meat. Um, I'll let all this food come to room temperature. So we'll just get the ground meat on the tray. All I did was brown this up with a little bit of onion and some salt, and that's it. So you want to get on the thin layer on here. A freeze dryer is an investment, but if you see a lot of benefits to it, then you might want to look into getting one. They are on sale different times of the year, and I know on Mother's Day, or for Mother's Day, they do put it on sale. All right, so we'll get our next item. So these are our mashed potatoes, and I'll link the video where I made the mashed potatoes and the meatloaf. Um, <clears throat> I just made these mashed potatoes with butter, 
salt, pepper, whipping cream. So we'll get these spread out. Now my freeze dryer, I have the medium size, and um, when I got it, they only had four trays in them, but I think now it comes with five trays, and if you do have the one that has the four trays, you can buy another um, insert that holds the trays to hold five, and then you can get that fifth tray, but we just have the four trays right now. Hopefully that's not too thick. I may need to put some over here. We'll do that. So we can spread this a little thinner. So this way you can have instant mashed potatoes and know exactly what's in them because they're homemade. I just planted my potatoes in the garden the other day, so this would be a, a great uh, way to preserve my potatoes if we can't eat them in time for them to kind of go bad. So having these different ways to preserve is a good idea. All right. I did have a little green beans left from dinner, so we're going to put these on here. These I just sauteed with some bacon grease, some onion, salt, and pepper. So we'll get these on here. So this is a great way to deal with leftovers if you don't want to throw them away. But you can freeze dry them and then have like ready-made meals. All right, so I'm going to slice up the meatloaf. We'll just lay it here in slices. And like I said, I'll link the video of making the meatloaf. Either in the card or the description box, or both. So I'm going to wash my hands and then we'll get this to the freeze dryer. All right, I know it's kind of loud in here, but the freeze dryer does have an oil pump here and that does make some noise. So that is kind of loud in this room. This is my laundry room. It is kind of a confined space. So we have, you see our four trays in here or slots to put our um, trays in. It is freezing right now. It tells you it's going to take 14, 15 minutes to come um, to freeze it. So we have to wait for that 15 minutes. There is a stopcock valve back here that um, allows the pressure to build, be built up in here and it releases the pressure with a drain line because once this defrosts, of course, you're going to all that moisture you've pulled out of your food is going to have to be drained out. So we're going to go ahead and close this valve so that when it comes to temperature, it can pressurize in here. So, um, All right, our 15 minutes is up. We can go ahead and get our trays in here. So we can open this up. It tells us to load our trays. The little screen on here tells us exactly what to do each, um, each step of the way. So it tells us to load our trays and close the valve. We closed our valve. So now we're going to hit the continue button. All right, now it says it's freezing. We did have to, um, this little switch here, when you lock it, then you lock it just a little bit further that um, creates this vacuum seal on here or this 
seal that when it's pressurized, it pulls that has a vacuum in there. So it will freeze the food and then it will start freeze drying the food. Um, this can take 24, 36 hours, depending on the moisture content of your food. And of course, like I said, if you pre-freeze your food, it does go a lot faster. So we will, I will keep track of this and we'll come back together when this is finished and we'll check it out, show you how to store your food. And then we will also rehydrate some and taste test it. Okay, it's been a couple of days um, since we ran the freeze dryer. And um, I think it took about 36 hours to dry. I think I, I restarted it a couple of times because I couldn't get to it right away. I had some stuff out in the garden to take care of. So I did run it for a little bit longer before I checked it. So I think it was around 36, maybe 40 hours we ran the freeze dryer. And um, when it came out, I uh, bagged it up in these Mylar bags, marked what it was. I didn't put the date on it just because... I knew I'd be opening it in a couple of days. I have my mashed potatoes. I have my meatloaf. One of them I did with um, meatloaf, mashed potatoes, and green beans. And um, so we kind of configured it in a bunch of different ways. Some of them just have meatloaf. Some of them have um, a combination, that kind of thing. I did do one huge package of mashed potatoes that um, I could do like a family size portion. So we put them in the Mylar bags. They do have this... Um, Kind of upside down you fill you fill it from this side and then you um, heat seal it so it's kind of all down here and so it has these little notches I don't know if you can see the little notch where you can pull it to tear it to open all right so we're gonna get these open we're gonna put them in our bowl and we're gonna put I don't know if you heard the microwave go off I'm heating some water in there for us to rehydrate this so we're gonna check this out All right, so our water is almost boiling. We'll open these. You can see in the bag, that's our mashed potatoes. Super powdery. I did put an oxygen absorber in here. This is the way you'd want to store it for long term. For these couple of days, I didn't need to, but I just was doing an assembly line, wasn't sure which one I'd pick up. so. We did that and this is our meatloaf it's super light too no water weight in here if only we could do that for ourselves all right so this is our slice of meatloaf it almost feels like styrofoam you can see it all right so we'll put this down here again our oxygen absorber and I'm going to start with just a little bit of water because I don't know how much it's going to take. It all depends on how much moisture is in your meatloaf, how much moisture. It just is all depends. So you have to start with a little bit at a time. I'm going to cover it with a plate so we can let it kind of steam in here. And we'll be back in a... I'll, I'll set the... Not set a timer, but I'll just check my watch and uh, we'll be back in a few minutes and see what it looks like. All right, let's check on it. It's been three minutes, so we'll check and see. The meatloaf seems to be almost ready. This obviously needs a little bit more. So we'll put a little bit more water on here. We'll give it a little stir. I can definitely smell the mashed potatoes. It really smells like mashed potatoes. Look at that, the texture is coming right back. A little bit more water. I bet you could even heat up some milk and um, rehydrate it with milk. I'm not a huge fan of leftover mashed potatoes, so this will be super interesting how well these did. Add a little bit more. Oh, my meatloaf kind of broke, but the texture seems really good. I don't know if you can see the 
super soft like it was the other night. My mashed potatoes. All right, we'll give this a try. All right, I'm gonna get my husband to try off camera. He doesn't want to be on camera, so I'll have him talk loud enough so he can hear his reaction. Tastes like mashed potatoes. All right, try the meatloaf now. This may need a little bit more water. A little bit more water. It's got a little crouton kind of crunch a little bit. That's the dog, by the way. <laughs> but the mashed potatoes, you'd never be able to tell that they were not freshly mashed. Okay, we'll add, a little, we'll add a little bit more water to the meatloaf then. All right, now I'm going to put the plate back over it just for that meatloaf to kind of steam. We'll give this like one more minute. All right, we're going to check this out now. Mashed potatoes look perfect. This is still super moist and tender. You can see that. All right, I'm going to try it now. All right, we'll give this a little bite. I'm going to do some mashed potatoes with the meatloaf. That's amazing. This opens up a whole new world. All the things I can save and have on hand in case of, I don't want to say emergencies, but you know, when electricity's out because of a hurricane like I'd mentioned or um, quick meals before I go to work. So many possibilities. Leftovers you don't want to throw away. If you have it in your budget to get a freeze dryer, they are on sale, I think, right now. Possibly Harvest Right is the brand I have. And uh, I know they put them on sale for Mother's Day. They put them on sale again for Black Friday. They do it several times throughout the year. It's a really good sale price. Once they do put them on sale, I suggest if you want to do it, you're kind of on the fence, you know, maybe check into it while they're on sale. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this. I hope it gave you a lot of information. If you have any comments about things you'd like to freeze dry if you have one or any questions you might have about the freeze dryer that I missed, um, just please leave those in the comment box. Hit subscribe if you haven't subscribed. Like this video if you know, it lets me know if you want to do more videos on freeze drying. Um, I can show you the broth. I can show you eggs. I have so many eggs coming in now. I need to get some eggs in the freeze dryer. Um, just let me know what you think. Anyway, thanks for watching.